Yo, what is up, Soul Fam? This is Chris with Soldier of Life, and welcome back to another episode of German Wednesday. <laughs> welcome back to another episode of German Wednesdays, where I discuss the differences between America and Germany. So today, in this video, we are talking about the differences in apartments. But let me tell you right now, now I'm not here to talk about prices, how do you get an apartment, and all of that stuff. We're talking about the physical elements that you can see, that you can actually you know, like touch, and the stuff that you can actually like monitor, like the real stuff. The real stuff that's actually like, you actually like, it's quantifiable. It's quantifiable. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one differences that I've seen with apartments is the style choice. You are able to choose the style of your apartment in a lot of cases. I'm not talking about all of them, but many of the cases that I have seen with apartments, they are actually able to pick some of the elements within the apartment. So let's say that we were going to get an apartment today that we've never seen if the person had carpet and we wish to have the carpet removed and put in tile flooring as long as you're willing to pay for it sure no problem it goes if you see that the wall is painted pink like this god awful mauve pink sorry mom yeah i don't like the color of mauve i like pink i don't like mauve. but if it's painted this god awful color that you absolutely hate and every time you look at it it makes you want to throw up and you just wanted them to paint it over they would paint it over. Now, of course, it's at a price, but so many, I don't think I've ever been in an apartment in America where you can actually pick these items, unless it was an apartment being built for you, which then it would probably be more like a condo. Number two is furnishing and unfurnishing. When they say unfurnished, it's a whole nother level. You don't get no stove, you don't get no kitchen, you don't get no cabinets, you get nothing. You get a big, hollow room with nothing in it. And that is definitely the difference in America and Germany. In America, I've never seen an apartment that they were trying to give to somebody that had no kitchen anything in it, that had no faucets and stuff. But in Germany, you need to usually go get these things yourself. Number three is screens on the windows. Bro, I'm from Florida and you cannot open your window without a screen on it. But with that being said, there are no, I don't think, I've never seen a window in Germany with the screen on it. They don't have screens on their windows for like 900 different reasons. Actually, it's probably like two. The first one is there's not really a lot of bugs in Germany. Like, I don't know if they just insecticide the whole country at one single time while they're growing their crops, but there's no bugs in Germany. If I left my window open in America, in the States, where I'm from, for more than like five minutes, for more than five minutes without a screen on it, there will be something in the house. There will be something in there and it will be at you. It will annoy you. It'll be a lizard or a fly or a mosquito or a crocodile. It'll be something in there. It will be something in there. You just can't open the window like that without screens on the windows. Which brings me to my fourth point, the window. The biggest huge thing that people say about the differences in Germany and America are the German windows. Those things flip upside down, inside out, all around, do the hokey pokey, turn themselves around, backspin, headspin, all that good They do all of that. And I think because of this window door system thingy, they don't need to have, they can't have screens. Like it wouldn't serve any purpose. There's no way they can put a screen on that thing on the, the way that those windows work. I don't know who engineered that window but if they didn't patent it, man, they lose on a lot of money because those windows are sick, sick -alicious. Number five are the door handles and locks. Now, one thing that you cannot do, I don't believe you can do this, it's gotta be a fire hazard, is have no door lock mechanism on your door. In America, how the locks operate, you have like a lot of the handles, they have key slots where you can go on either side of the door. In Germany, they have a lot of doors in the apartments that only have a knob. There's no key that you can put in, no way you can turn it. So with this, they have a deadlock. So the deadlock is on the top and the little mechanism is at the bottom. Now I've been in houses, long story, not telling it, but I've been in houses where I was actually locked into the apartment. This is because if a person leaves, locks the door, because there's a deadlock inside, if that deadlock is a key only, 
and that person locks the door, then nobody can get inside. Why? Because you cannot turn the handle to open the door. And if the deadlock is locked, you're not getting through the deadlock unless you have the key. So this is something that in the States that you just cannot have. And that's one thing about the German doors. I understand it, but I don't really like it because, you know, I was locked in the house one time and I don't like it. It pissed me off. I was angry. Six is the power ground plug, obviously. Um, one of the differences between the states and America is we, we operate on 110 uh, volts in Europe and most of the rest of the world, like everybody. They operate on 220. Now, in their little plug thingy thingy thing, they have two slots, which I'm guessing positive and negative. I don't know how that power stuff works. Like, that makes me sound stupid. Now, one of the things that I've come across is that in America, we have the three slots or three prong. I've seen a couple three prong thingy things I believe I don't even know actually now I think about it I don't know send a comment below or send me to a link to a picture where you got the three prongs in Europe with the two circles like I I can't remember I think I seen yeah I have seen one I have yeah something here's got to be three prongs or maybe not in Germany I've I don't think I've ever seen that third a third hole I'm looking at one of my power plug things now and it's only got a slot for two holes like oh, right so like this like everything that I've seen in Germany has been like this, two prongs. And this little system is two prongs. But what I had to do is push a little hole in it because I'm super ghetto and they don't just sell these like in the street. No, so I had to put a hole in it because what I have is my laptop charger is from America. So we have the third prong, which is operates as the ground wire. I look like I'm doing a tutorial right now. I look hella smart, right? <laughs> so that's my ghetto system of making Three prongs. Number seven is the community communal areas. That might be an oxymoron, community communal. But the communal areas are cleaned by everybody in that apartment building, in that apartment number, which is so dope. It is so community oriented. Um, just as the place that I'm at now, every Sunday, I believe it is, somebody different on the schedule is uh, tasked out to clean the stairs and wipe down the mailboxes inside the buildings and mop the floors. This is awesome because A, it brings the community together, make sure the community is taking care of themselves and each other, but B, it also makes sure that you're taking care of your stuff. I'm a firm believer if you live somewhere and it's your place, you want to take care of it. You don't want to really be responsible for other people not doing their stuff, but it's like you're taking control of your own building if you stay here because nobody's going to go out in the hallway and start cleaning because it's not the American way. Number seven is the name on the apartment. That is one thing that is very cool. A lot of apartments in Germany, they put your name on your apartment door. They put the name on the mailbox. This is so they can find out who is at this apartment without having to do some guesswork. I know in America, in houses and stuff back in the day, people used to have their names on the mailbox. Only so the mailman can know, I guess, who it is. It and if people are driving by and they know them, they can come there. But there's no like regulatory stature where you gotta have your name on the door or you gotta have your name on your apartment building. Nobody does that, you know, pium, pium, pium. Which brings me to point number nine is the packages from the mail person or whatever it is. A lot of times they will check the name on the door and make sure that it is right. Make sure it coincides with this person. And another super huge thing is leaving packages with neighbors. But since I've been living in Germany, I've noticed that a lot of times when I order packages, if I wasn't home or I wasn't able to get the package that day, maybe I didn't hear the phone or maybe I didn't hear the doorbell or whatever it is, they would deliver the package to a neighbor. Now I know this has been a service now in America where you're gonna have somebody verified, but in Germany, you know, it just seems like in apartments, if you're not there for the package and somebody is around, they'll deliver it to that person. And it's just like a trust system. Like you just trust that person to give you the mail or whatever it is that you receive. So I think it was like four or five things that I've ordered since being here. And I wasn't around to get the delivery. I wasn't around for the delivery person to come so I can sign for the package. So my neighbor ended up signing for the package and I didn't even ask him to. He had signed for the package, he received the package for me, put a little note on my door and let me know he had the package. So these are 10 of the big differences in apartments in Germany, really, 
yeah, that's all I got. I definitely appreciate you guys watching. And like I said, if you see this video in time, make sure you give it a like. Also, subscribe if you haven't for videos like this and others daily. That's all I got for you guys today. It's Chris with Soldier of Life, and I'll see you in the next one.